Hey guys, what up? Happy Saturday. Um, if I seem a little bit low energy right now, it is because I basically just woke up and it takes me a good hour to actually stop growling. Um, so right now I'm growling at you guys in my head, but you know you can't hear it. Um, but yeah, so I did a Black Friday um, haul video and one of the items that, look, let's just say this. I have been trying a lot of um, green brands lately. They're mostly international green brands um, for some reason. Not because I'm trying to switch to green beauty or anything like that. It's just that I've been coming across a lot of green brands that are actually kind of intriguing me. So like I said in my haul video, I kind of fell down an Urban Outfitters rabbit hole on um, Black Friday into Cyber Monday. And the reason for that was, um, I don't know. Honestly, I honestly can't say. I fell down a rabbit hole which took me to anthropology and then took me to free people. I didn't actually get anything from free people because they weren't actually having a, a sale. Um, but I did come across a brand on free people that I actually went to the brand's website and checked them out. And the brand is um, Era Perez. It is a Australian clean brand. Uh, and the thing that intrigued me about this brand was because um, when I was looking at their products on their website, everything um, that they use to make their products is stuff that you can eat. Like you can literally eat everything that's in their products. Now, I wouldn't advise that you do that, but you could if you wanted to. Um, like I said, it's an Australian brand. I really don't know how old they are. They do have quite a bit of product. Um, they have two foundations and I got the quinoa water foundation and they have another one called the oat milk foundation which is a more full coverage foundation I got this because you guys know I'm not a huge fan of full coverage and also because it had oat in the name and I'm kind of allergic to topical oat products for some reason they make me break out they make my skin itch really badly so I didn't get that one and also because when I looked at the consistency I was like that looks super thick and I'm not feeling it so um I didn't get that I got this one instead now this one only comes in three colors it comes in a light shade a medium shade and a, a dark shade and I think the reason why they do that is because it's supposed to be able to fit so many skin tones because it's a very very lightweight foundation um, I don't know if it's buildable or not but we shall see I also got their Arnica concealer. I don't even know what Arnica is. I've never heard of it. Read a little bit of what um, it's supposed to do if I can find it. You guys know I don't prepare for anything, so y'all gonna be sitting here while I look for it. It's cool though. It's cool. It really is. All right. So the Kino Water Foundation is forty Australian dollars, and I did purchase from the uh, Era Perez um, website because, like I said, Anthropology was. Wait, anthropology you no know, free people wasn't having a sale um, and if you sign up on the era Perez website you get 10% off for signing up for their newsletter and they do ship worldwide the shipping was kind of a lot shipping was $15 15 Australian dollars so that was just like around 12 bucks around 12 bucks so this is 40 Australian dollars, which would be 32 American dollars, I believe. Um, all right, what it says, a lightweight water-based vegan foundation for medium deep to deeper skin tones, enriched with quinoa to help heal inflammation and increase elasticity. Black currant is added for antioxidants and vitamins. These ingredients rejuvenate while helping to reduce redness, pigmentation, and fine lines, glides on, Blendable and melts into your skin for a fresh matte finish for light or medium coverage. Apply with our Eco No. Available in three shades. Okay, so that's yeah, what we so have. I got the Arnica Concealer in Mocha. Um, and it is 30. How much is it? It's 35 Australian, which is about, I don't know, like. 20 something it's 20 something American it says we've worked hard to create the best cream concealer that covers over dark circles and blemishes big small red or nasty 
Did you know that you what you put over your little spot can actually make it worse? Not this everyday concealer with natural arnica considered to be an antiseptic and anti-inflammatory. It covers up while calming the inflamed area, also covers uh, hyperpigmentation and inconsistencies in skin tone. Full coverage, even you'll forget what's hiding on under the foundation and we're also going to try the concealer. The foundation, like I said, I got the um, Kino Water Foundation. Uh, and I got it in the shade Dusk, which is the third shade, the darkest shade, and it kind of looks like, looks like this, kind of, sort of, but it's in a frosted glass bottle, so you never really know what it's going to look like until you get it out of the bottle. And the concealer I got in the shade Mocha, it looks like this. Um, I'm not anticipating this being, oh, this feels really nice, oh, wow. Hmm, it's really easy to spread, but it does have a slight powdery feel to it, and I am intrigued by that. It's kind of thin though, but you know, we're we're going to reserve judgment until we actually put it under our eyes and see how it works. So I'm going to be doing a wear test on these products as well. With a, you know, let me move this phone right quick, because y'all know I'm clumsy. Um, it comes with this dropper style bottle. This is the color. And it looks like a pretty good match for me. Um, ooh, yeah, it looks like a pretty decent match for me. As you can see, it's like really watery. And because it is so watery, I'm actually not going to use a beauty blender to apply it because the beauty blender will suck everything up. I'm going to be using the Sephora... Um, diamond cut brush. I know y'all haven't seen me use this brush in a while and it's not because I, my feelings have changed on the brush. I still really do like this brush. The only problem is when you wash it, it literally takes like four days to dry. So it's usually like I'm using it when I'm not on camera and then by the time I get on camera it still hasn't dried it so I don't use it. But it's finally dry. So I'm going to use that okay. today. Hair is back and I am going to put the foundation on my, um, I have a little I don't know what to call it like it's a little mixing thing so I'm putting it on the little mixing thing I'm taking three drops on there um, and we're gonna start with three drops and see how well it works um, oh yeah by the way I do I'm wearing primer I'm also wearing sunscreen um, the primer that I'm using is the black up strobing primer One of the reasons why I really wanted to do this also is because I know that there are a lot of um, black and brown girls that are into green beauty, but a lot of green beauty brands don't make um, shades for us. And while myself personally, I am not really into green beauty, I feel like people who want to be into green beauty should have, um, should have options. No matter your skin okay, tone. So three drops on one side of my face gave very, very light coverage, but it's not terrible coverage. Um, as you can see, it's not meant to be a full coverage foundation. It's probably better applied with fingers, but y'all know me and that whole finger situation. Just, I, I just, I can't. Um, but it really just looks like my skin, but better. Um, it's actually really nice. So I'm going to finish up the other side of my face because y'all don't really need to see me doing all of that. Um, but yeah, so this is what we have so far. And I'm actually, I'm like, it, it's nice. I actually kind of like it. It's kind of okay, guys. So this is what we have so far. Um, uh, so, all right. This is probably going to sound weird, but bear with me. Um, so the foundation, um, it's a little bit gray. The undertone is a little bit gray. Uh, the color is decent. Like I said, it's very, very lightweight foundation. It's not meant to be full coverage. Um, I did try to put it on with my fingers. Mm, no, uh, that's not for me. But um, 
I could see myself wearing this in the summertime, like if I wanted something super light but I still wanted my complexion to look together, I would wear this in the summertime even though the undertone is kind of grayish. Um, that's something that's easily fixed with powder which I plan on doing a little bit later in this video. But it's not terrible. I've seen worse IT cosmetics. Um, so this is not too big Just a deal. Move on to the concealer and see how that works. So this is the color Mocha. Um, it is number five in the line. Um, this actually has a better undertone to me. I do think that the, um, I do think that the, the other foundation would probably have been a better undertone and I'm just saying that simply based on the swatches that I saw. This concealer is, seems to be pretty full coverage. Um, like I said earlier, it's kind of emollient but it's also slightly patchy. I'm just gonna let it sit for a minute and then I'm gonna come back so and work. I'm back and spoiler alert, I don't think this concealer is going to hold up well. It's already, it's not really drying down. You know how when you put a concealer on and it starts to like get a little bit tacky or whatever? Um, and you know it's a good concealer because while it's getting tacky it doesn't creep into the lines under your eyes. This one is already creeping into the lines under my eyes so I'm not holding out a whole lot of hope for it. Um, but we're just gonna go in with it anyway and see what happens. pretty brightening but um, I'm still gonna have to go in with another layer yeah no um, no no um, I'm <laughs> Wow, my Wet n Wild concealer is the goat. Um, I'm gonna go over it with my Wet n Wild concealer because I have other videos to do today. So, um, I, yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. So here's my face. It is now 2:18 p.m. I'm. I actually did not go over it with um, the Wet n Wild concealer. Um, I did uh, set it with Kanafa, and I set the rest of my face with Cinnamon Bun. However, and you guys probably will not be able to see this on screen, but my cheeks are quite red. They're getting red um, as if I'm having some kind of allergic reaction to this foundation. Like I can't feel anything, but my cheeks are getting a little bit red. Um, so I'm still planning on doing a wear test. However, I'm gonna give this about an hour and if the redness does not um, if the redness gets worse or it's a little bit on my nose as well if the redness gets worse then I'm just going to take this off and I'll come back and let you guys know later that I, I took it off and I wasn't able to complete the wear test but as of right now like all of this right here this right here is red and right here and this is one of the reasons why I don't use green beauty because usually I have some kind of reaction to it um, but yeah, this is what we have so hey far. Guys, I'm back. And it kind of doesn't matter what time it is because as you can see, I am barefaced. Why is that, you ask? Well, let me tell you. So I went downstairs to get some food after I, I you know, put on the foundation or whatever. Went downstairs to get some food and when I got downstairs, I went into the downstairs bathroom because that bathroom has better lighting. So that's where I check my makeup because sometimes it'll look good here or it would look terrible here. And then when I go downstairs, um, the bathroom downstairs, the lighting is so much better and you can really see what's going on. Well. What was going on was I was gray as hell. Um, like legit gray, I had started to look like dead flesh. Um, the redness on my cheeks uh, wasn't going away. 
and like I said I didn't feel anything so I don't know if it was an allergic reaction or it was just like the pressure from me using the brush so it, it, it wasn't going away but that wasn't the real problem for me I kept it on for like an hour and then I went back into the bathroom to see if anything changed and legit it had gotten even grayer and the the messed up part about it is that the foundation is so um, it's such a lightweight foundation that you could see um, the concealer around my eyes here even though I had blended it in it just, <laughs> you know how when someone gets a tan um, and they use the, the glasses that's what it looked like on my face so I was just like all right so it's great maybe it's my sunscreen um, which my sunscreen hasn't ever done that with anything before because the sunscreen that I use it has, has a peach base to it so it usually looks fine under foundation but okay this one is very lightweight foundation so I said all right let me go and try to you know fix it somehow so I went into the bathroom and I washed my face off and came back here and reapplied well started to reapply the foundation um, and, and this time straight out the gate um, it was just dead flesh no I think that okay so what I noticed um, when like I told you I was using like a little mixing palette type thing so what I noticed when I had taken um, foundation off of the mixing palette what I noticed was at the edge of the foundation where it had started to dry there was like a white ring like you know like right around the edges of the foundation there was a white ring and I think that might have to something to do with the quinoa water that they use as a base so alright guys thank you so much for joining me on my little exploration of Era Perez um, the brand is available on their own website they do ship from Australia um, I think yeah you can also find it on free people or anthropology I'm not sure which one but um, yeah I, I think it, the brand is worth a look I really do think it's worth a look um, but it, this foundation and the concealer just didn't work for me um, but I might explore other things but as usual it's been real it's been fun and I will see you guys in the next one bye